Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim Saeed, and in today's video, we're going to delve deep into the intricate world of narcissistic behavior. Brace yourself as I unveil the shadows and expose the chilling reality of these dark personalities and unravel the disturbing intentions behind their actions. I won't shy away from the discomforting truth which is their conscious intention to inflict pain and manipulate those around them. While popular opinions often highlight vulnerabilities or attribute their actions to unconscious behavior, this video won't sugarcoat the real truth. Now let's dive in. Unmasking the Narcissist very few relationships start on terms other than sweetness and politeness. In the beginning, the honeymoon of the relationship, it's difficult to determine what type of individual you are dealing with. This usually involves a romantic partner, but it can also be a friend, a coworker, or a family member. Narcissists are often charming and charismatic, but beneath that facade lies a darker reality. They are manipulative, controlling, and they intentionally hurt others to maintain their power and control. Narcissistic individuals possess a cult leader mentality characterized by a grandiose sense of self-importance and a constant need to control and exploit those who are closest to them. This cult leader mentality explains why they all seem to have gone to narcissist university, engaging in similar behaviors as if they all received the same training manual. But in truth, it's simply the use of a set of manipulative psychological techniques that are designed to change your behavior and alter your perception of the world around you. And these are the same mind controlled techniques used by cult leaders. Think about it this way. Remember all the things the narcissist said they loved about you in the beginning? Now, these very things are what the narcissist says that they hate about you, as if your best qualities are the bane of their existence. This is not by accident. Both a narcissist and a cult leader share a fundamental desire to control and exploit other people for their own benefit. They are driven by a need for power, admiration, and validation. Their primary objective is to shape the thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors of others to align with their own agendas. Both personalities lack empathy towards others and exploit the emotional vulnerabilities of their targets. They prey on individuals seeking validation, belonging, connection, or purpose, using these needs and wants to gain influence over them. Narcissists and cult leaders often have grandiose self-image, considering themselves unique, superior, or even divine. They expect unwavering loyalty and obedience from those around them, and they are highly sensitive to criticism or dissent. This is why they react with anger or attempt to discredit those who challenge their authority or ask questions about their behaviors. This is when you start to see their true colors through their constant verbal abuse, the character attacks, and the nasty smear campaign that actually started long before you were ever aware of it. Despite what mainstream psychology would have you believe, narcissists are not operating out of unconscious wounding or some attachment style. Both narcissists and cult leaders have the same underlying motive, to exert control and manipulation over others, to fulfill their own desires and maintain their positions of authority. The most notorious cult leaders were all narcissists. This is not a simple coincidence. Check the description box below this video for an in-depth article on how narcissists are like cult leaders. Now let's dissect the dark truth behind the veil so you can protect yourself from dangerous and dark personalities like narcissists. Number one, identifying the narcissist manipulative tactics. Narcissists lack empathy and exploit others for their own gain without remorse. It's essential to differentiate between healthy self-confidence and the destructive narcissism I'm covering in this video. 
to understand how narcissists hurt others intentionally, we must uncover the manipulative tactics narcissists employ. Gaslighting, a cruel form of psychological manipulation, makes their victims question their reality and self-worth. They use charm and flattery to draw people in only to later devalue and discard them when they no longer serve a purpose. They often isolate their targets from any support system, which is why they encourage their victims to cut off family and friends. Like cult leaders, narcissists use guilt and obligation to maintain their influence over their victims. They exaggerate their own so-called sacrifices, create a sense of indebtedness, or claim to be the victim themselves, making the victim feel responsible for the narcissist's well-being and happiness. Only, ironically, despite your Herculean efforts to make them happy, nothing is ever good enough. Many narcissists also resort to fear and intimidation to assert control. They may use threats, emotional blackmail, or aggression to instill fear in their victim, making them comply with their demands. This might sound like, well, if you don't want to do that thing in the bedroom, I know someone who will, or you're the only one I have problems with. My ex never acted this way, even though in the beginning they said you were the only one who understood them and they ranted on about how awful their ex was. They may also threaten to share that risque picture or video of you with your family and friends. And this is why you should not post or share intimate images of yourself with someone you don't know well or is showing signs of instability. Moving on, did it seem like you and the narcissist had so much in common when you met them? Narcissists typically mimic their victim's emotions and interests early on in the relationship to create a sense of rapport and connection. This mirroring helps them gain the victim's trust and manipulate their empathy as the victim feels responsible for the narcissist's well-being. Last but not least, both narcissists and cult leaders blatantly disregard personal boundaries. They invade their victim's privacy, manipulate their decisions, and violate their autonomy to establish dominance and control. If you try to leave them, they'll hoover you pretending to care. If that doesn't work, they may resort to stalking you. In this case, you will need to contact the authorities. However, if you fear for your physical safety, call the police police and contact your local domestic violence center. Next is the empathy void. One of the most unsettling aspects of narcissism is their lack of empathy. They refuse to understand or care about the feelings and experiences of other people. This empathy void enables them to inflict harm without feeling any guilt or remorse. Have you caught yourself thinking, I can't believe there are people like this in the world? Well, there are, and they've been showing you this all along. It's just likely that you didn't want to believe it. In your mind, you think they're just a normal person who is having normal struggles, but they are so far removed from being normal that it would make you sick to know about all they think and do on any given day. And mainstream psychology is all too happy to keep this narrative alive in your mind. Narcissists share similar brain abnormalities as psychopaths. This is largely responsible for their lack of empathy. The sooner you accept this, the sooner you can make better choices for yourself. Maybe instead of referring to mainstream psychology and the DSM, explore other areas of research like the dark triad. This will give you a more accurate outlook about the narcissistic personality. The narcissist's need for control. Narcissists often seek excessive control over others to fulfill their sense of entitlement. They manipulate situations and people to maintain their sense of superiority. When someone challenges their authority or questions their actions, they can resort to aggressive tactics to reassert control and dominance. This can be seen and how they always shift blame onto you, even though they're the one who crossed the line. They try to make you believe you're the reason they were forced. 
to lie, cheat, steal, or hurt someone else. Or they may pretend they're on board regarding going to therapy with you, but then they lie to the therapist and even use the therapy setting as a training ground. Everything the narcissist does is to maintain control over you. Even when they are being nice, it's an integral part of their manipulation. Number four is the web of narcissistic supply. Narcissists crave constant validation known as narcissistic supply. They manipulate and exploit others, creating a web of individuals who fulfill their insatiable need for attention, admiration, and praise. You may have heard this referred to as their harem, or perhaps you've heard of the term monkey branching. These terms embody most narcissists' perpetual need to have constant sources of people to take advantage of and feed off of. If you're in their grasp, it's challenging to escape the clutches of their self-centered world, but it can be done. The first step is acceptance. Acceptance of who and what you're dealing with, as opposed to clinging to that first imprint you have of them when they were love bombing you. Number five, dealing with a narcissist. If you've discovered you're dealing with a narcissist, it's vital to set healthy boundaries and limit your interactions. Remember, they feed off your emotional reactions. So try to remain calm and detached. Stop trying to have civil and diplomatic conversations with them. Stop trying to teach them the basics of human decency. Stop believing they're unaware and unconscious of their behavior. Stop sending them links to articles and videos about narcissism or signing them up for newsletters that are designed for abuse victims. Stop trying to drag them into therapy and stop trying to apply normal psychology to someone whose inner workings you cannot comprehend. Whatever it is that you want to communicate to them about their wicked ways, they've heard it all before from other people. You're not the first to school them on how wrong they are and you're not going to motivate them to change or feel sorry for how they've acted. Accept who you are dealing with and proceed accordingly. Next, you want to focus on your self-preservation. If you find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist, remember that self-preservation is essential. Recognize your self-worth and the impact their behavior has on your mental and emotional well-being. Sometimes cutting ties with toxic individuals is necessary for your own growth and happiness. This is usually easier said than done, but nevertheless, it's entirely possible. When you decide to leave a relationship with a narcissist, it isn't time to feel sorry for them for what you imagine is their helplessness over their condition. It's not the time to offer unconditional support or friendship. When you leave a relationship with a narcissist, you must look at it as a matter of survival because that's exactly what it is. If it's a family member or adult child, these criteria still apply. But if you do choose to maintain a relationship with a narcissistic family member, you must keep in mind that who they've been showing up as is who you're always going to get. Stop fighting reality because when we fight against reality, we all always lose. In closing, understanding narcissistic behavior can be unsettling, but it's essential to acknowledge and accept their dark personality traits. Remember, it's not your responsibility to fix or change them, and it's not even up to you. Instead, focus on your own self-protection, your own well-being, and rebuilding the parts of you that the narcissist tried to steal away. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me on this insightful journey of understanding narcissistic behavior. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. Don't forget to comment down below with your thoughts and suggestions for future topics. Until next time, take care and stay mindful of those around you.